This is a project idea using Maple. It will include plots and animations and an explorer. It involves modeling the trajectory of baseball through the air. Let's get started. Okay, we'll make this project pretty fast. The idea here is we're going to hit the ball with a particular launch speed at a launch angle, some point above the ground at x equals zero, and it will eventually land. This is a dynamical process, so therefore we want to solve for the position and this momentum is a function of time, and these are vectors. So just as you would read it, uh, the momentum principle says the change of momentum with time is due to a net force and the change of position with time is due to the fact that we have momentum. We're going to have two forces here, that of the earth and that of the air. The earth is made of its x component, which is zero, and in the vertical negative y component, which is m times g. We'll have the force of the air here which is due to some constant times the speed squared. And so this is how we calculate speed. It's in the negative direction opposite the, the direction of the momentum. And so to calculate the direction of the momentum, we take its magnitude. I'm sorry, we take the vector and divide by its magnitude. Okay. Again, doing some engineering, we find out that the total coefficient in front is due to one half the drag coefficient times the density of the air times the cross-sectional area. These are values we can look up. And how do we calculate the magnitude? Well, it's the square root of the dot product of the vector itself with itself. And the nice thing about this technique is that you can do it in two or three dimensions. Here we go. Since we are going to do it in two dimensions, we have to make sure we define both R and P as a function of time. So there's its X part and there's its Y part. Let's get started with this. Let's see how it looks here. That looks pretty good. We hit enter, we hit enter, we hit enter. So what do our ODEs look like? And you can see they are written in vector format for each component of the vector. What's our initial conditions? Well, our initial conditions is at momentum at t equals zero. It has some mass at a launch velocity, and it is given by some initial position. That initial launch velocity is due to its magnitude times an angle, either in the x, in the x direction and the y direction, and its position is given by zero and its initial position. Everything else here is we need to put some constants in, and you may have noticed that I have not defined the constant for the launch speed or the launch angle. What we're going to do here is we're going to set it as a parameter. So you can see it produces, when you do, it produces the results of each component of the vectors, but that the launch parameters v sub zero and theta will be changed on the fly. We'd like to extract out these solutions, so I tend to do that by doing this. And as you can see, each component, which the one I'll call x of the ball, y of the ball, are functions of time. So you can treat them as functions, even though that what they really are are procedures. So let's do an example where we're going to set it up such that the velocity of the ball is given by 90. It's hit at 75 degrees from this. Now that we have set the solutions with those particular parameters, we can calculate the y of the ball when it lands. That's solve it when, when it lands at some positive location. Okay. And by doing that, then what we can do is we can now plot its position in the x direction, converting it to feet, its position in the y direction, converting it to feet, and have it as a parameter. So there's the x component, there's the y component, and you can see the trajectory of the ball. Knowing that our frames per second is about 10, you can calculate the number of frames you might want to put into your animation. Therefore, you are animating a plot. This plot is a symbol style point. It has a data set of one data point. 
that one data point is the X and Y. Again, I'm going to convert from meters into feet. Uh, we'll say this symbol is a solid circle. It is a symbol size 20, color blue. And as you can see, what we do here is we have this, we click on it. There's the trajectory of the ball in basically real time as it goes up in the air and falls. And these are in feet, which are the values that you might see in Major League Baseball. What's the next part? Well, let's say we want to explore a bunch of animations. Okay, there we go. And so this is a procedure. We're going to pass it the two parameters. And it's going to set those parameters into the solutions. Solve for when the ball hits the ground. Create a array of plots. The first plot which is in row one, column one, is the plot of our trajectory as before. And the second plot, which is in row one, column two, is a plot of both velocity and uh, in the x and y direction as a function of time. Let's explore that plot. Okay, passing it some parameters, okay, giving a scale of those parameters giving some initial values for the parameters. There's our plot here. What you can do is, again, you can now change the velocity as you decrease it or increase it. You can see how its trajectory changes for that particular angle. And again, we've plotted here, over here, our velocity is a function of time. We can, of course, can change the angle which we hit the ball. Now we've hit popped it up. Now we're hitting more of a line drive, and you can use this to figure out what is the optimal angle. Okay, you can find the document from where I drew this project on my website, which can be found below.